If you pay enough attention and can read between the lines, you'll start to notice that not everything is as it seems on the surface. And if you're brave enough and can let go of traditional conventions long enough, you might just discover a subliminal discrimination through situational comedic entertainment that has been on flagrant display right under our noses for over half a century! No, this has nothing to do with the How Many Licks Tootsie Pop Owl, Nighttime Whistler. I'm talking about the blatantly unfair societal favoritism the Adams Family has had over the Munsters for all of these years. You're supposed to just think of them as old shows, Nighttime Whistler. Just two old shows, sitting on a shelf like a couple of vague but pleasant memories from days gone by. Or a blatant flaunting of perpetual societal injustice! Don't mistake a jocular sneer with genuine pain, Nighttime Whistler. This is a really bad message we're sending to the Crumb Crunchers. I mean, how have we gone all these years without realizing all along that they are subliminally telling us what to love and what to loathe by presenting us with the clearly delineated contrast of the suave, handsome, filthy rich tycoon Gomez Adams and bumbling, fumbling, socially awkward, baby got her blue jeans on Herman Munster, who has to work so hard every day and can't even afford to eat lunch at a 7-Eleven. I'm not making assumptions, Nighttime Whistler. Why else would Lily be handing him his lunchbox all the time? It's not like Fred Gwynn was Chaplin-esque with props. <laughs> Gomez Adams smokes and Herman Munster cries? W what is that supposed to mean, Nighttime Whistler? If you're trying to pile on, you're only going to mess up the works. I was the first one to be outraged by this, so kindly remove your wrench from my hyperbole, because I'm on a roll. Fact. Lily Munster is showing gray and wears second-hand dresses. Morticia Adams gets her hair colored on a regular basis and probably has a personal trainer to be able to wear such tight dresses at her age. She is smoking hot. Literally. Fact. Wednesday and Pugsley Adams are rich, elitist brats, spoiled with expensive and exotic toys by wannabe decas posing as common, ordinary, run-of-the-mill creature feature fodder. But the sexy ones. I mean, it may be an eternal curse in the fine print, but being a vampire is a pretty sweet gig, considering you could have been a mummy. Or a creature from a black lagoon. Or Keith Richards. I'm not pulling anything out of my butt, Nighttime Whistler. If the Hollywood elite doesn't favor the rich over the working class, then why is it that the Adams Family got two movies in color before the Munsters even saw a feature film? And the fact that theirs was in color was used in the marketing like it was a gift. No favorites here? Then please explain to me where else but Sotheby's or the open black market would you find the kinds of toys those Adams kids have? I mean, last time I checked my local Walmart Supercenter, with added sandwich eye care banking strip mall for an improved shopping experience, I didn't notice any guillotines or spike modified brass trimmed 16th century Iron Maidens! Yes, I do realize that Eddie Munster only has a tattered, generic, headless werewolf rag doll, Nighttime Whistler. That's my point. I'm sure they were fresh out of secondhand King Kong's that particular Christmas. The lonely, unbranded wolfman was all the working man could find. Or afford. And to make matters worse, they gave Wednesday Adams a doll as well. But hers had a disability. Good for her. <whistles> Don't tell me not having a head isn't a disability, Nighttime Whistler. I see proof to the contrary every night when I watch the news. Which is why I have been able to come to these rather profound observations and assertions. And should you find yourself tempted, Nighttime Whistler, please refrain from spitting all over my pontification. Fact. Uncle Fester's ability to spontaneously create electricity, without a permit, I might add, makes the elite Adams clan immune to rising energy costs and any potential future rolling blackouts. Fact. The blonde, busty Marilyn Munster is just there to distract us from Herman and Lily's inner beauty. Fact. 
The Adams family actually discriminates against the handicapped, despite faking it by giving their daughter a cerebrally diminished dolly. And if you disagree, then explain how it is just fine for them to refer to their bodily challenged friend as Thing and refer to their own flesh and blood, who suffers from an obviously horrific follicle disorder, as Cousin It. And they force a shy man with a speech impediment to answer the door. Every. Single. Time. You rang. It's a tragedy of epic proportions, Nighttime Whistler. Somebody should do a TV show about it. Oh, wait. Never mind.